Welcome to No Brainer MMA. I'm joined here with Connor, as always. What's up, Dan? Breaking down, not much. Uh, we're breaking down UFC 264, giving you our fight picks, good good betting picks. Yeah. The whole the whole nine. I got and some great um, like locks for the going the distance. I got like a couple for this, so. That's what I like to hear. Smart bets. A lot of smart bets in this one. All right. So we got no, nothing to recap, really. Yeah, we got a week off. Yeah, we had a week off. So let's let's get right into this. It's a Conor McGregor card. We don't fuck around now. Yeah. Um, Connor, take it away. First right. fight of the night, we got Alan Adam Who versus Alan Amadovsky. Yeah. So we got Emidovsky, 8-2 MMA record, all eight wins by KO, TKO, 0-2 in the UFC, has landed a total of six significant strikes over the course of those two fights. He was taken down at will against Christoph Jocko and was KO'd by John Phillips and is actually John Phillips' only UFC win. He's 1-5 in in the UFC. Uh, Not to keep shitting on him, but like he averages less than a strike a minute, a minus 2.62 striking differential. Just hasn't really looked good in the UFC at all. He's taken on Yao Zong Hu, who has a 3-2 and two MMA record really early on, very green, with all three of his wins at heavyweight, actually. And this fight is at middleweight. Um, the last fight he fought at was 205, was light heavyweight, but he's actually making all the, dropping all the way down to middleweight for this one. And I think we'll for sure have the size advantage. He's 6'3". He's a big guy. Um, I think... Um, Emidovsky is like 5'10 or something like that. He hasn't fought since 2018 and is coming off a 10-month suspension for doping. So he's fresh off a cycle. I like to see that. He's uh, And he fights out of Tiger Muay Thai. He's got some pretty great striking stats. 4.4 4. 4 strikes per minute, 52% striking accuracy, a slight minus 0.8 striking differential. This fight is staying on the feet, and I think that Yao Zhang Hu is just superior uh, so I'm going with him for sure. Yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head with uh, every single point you just made. It, it basically lined up with my notes down to the T. So I'm going to agree with you there. I think that who has three and two record, you might be a little discouraged from that. But keep in mind, look at these guys he's training with. Yeah, he's fight. Yeah, he's fighting on a tiger with a tie. It's like one of the top three easily best striking camps. And um, doesn't he have a background in fucking... Let's just say, we just know this guy strikes. Um, I don't like his reach. That's about it. But yeah, I'm going to take Zhao Zhang Hu in this way. All right, we're agreeing on the first one, and I think that's an underdog pick to start off the night that we're both agreeing on. How, what is that, Dan? Do you know? I got it. Oh, he's a plus one forty. Yeah. Um, starting it off good. We're gonna move. Right, we're gonna agree. We're gonna go with Yao Zong Hu, and we're gonna move right into the next one. Zalgis Zamugulov versus Jerome Rivera. <laughs> Excuse me, Zalgis Zam- Zamugulov, man. He's had a rough time at it so far in the UFC. You love him. He's great. What's what? Nothing. Nothing to hate about the guy. 0-2 in the UFC. He's a Kazakhstani fighter. He has some notable wins in other promotions over Tyson Nam and Tigir Alan Bekov. Uh, he's actually Tigir Alan Bekov's only loss. Very well-rounded. Averages four strikes per minute at 50% accuracy. 1.5 takedowns per fight. He's going to be taking on Jerome Rivera, who fought at featherweight in his last time out after taking a short-notice fight against Ode Osborne. I was gonna say that was short notice. Yeah, that was very short notice, which was I'm, I respect him for taking that actually. Two weeks. He got destroyed by Ode though. Oh yeah, it wasn't close. He's one in three in the UFC. He's on a three fight losing streak. He's gonna have the advantage in all physical stats with a six inch height advantage, six point five inch reach advantage. He wins mostly by submission. He's got seven submission wins. Averages three strikes per minute at only thirty four percent accuracy. He's never landed a takedown in the UFC. He's gone zero for ten, and since his strike his strengths is are grappling um, and he hasn't even registered a takedown is a huge red flag. I think Zalgis is finally able to get in the better side of a decision in this one. 
Yeah, um, I was originally going to go with Jerome Rivera just because I liked his experience. Um, he, he he was fighting in the LFA for a couple of years, honestly. He, he was fighting in the LFA from like 2017 to 2020. So he definitely has it. Um, I It's just like looking through his last three fights and the tape, it's just like... Yeesh. Yeah, it hasn't really showed much. Yeah. Um I I'm gonna agree with you again. I just I like the Kazakhstani fighter in this. Yeah. Um, uh, I think you've said it before. He's probably the best 0 and two fighter in the in the flyweight division at the very least. Definitely and up there in the UFC for me. that is a quote, Dan. That's I'm glad you remembered that. Yeah, I seriously he's he's super well rounded, tough as nails. Zalgas Amugulov. Watch out. All right, so we're both agreeing on that one. We're both going Zalgas Amugulov. We're going to move right into the next one. Uh, Omar Medov versus Brad Tavares. Take it away, Dan. All right, so we got Omar Medov. Um, he's just coming off a win in January over Tom Brees where he hit him with that tri- uh, arm triangle choke. Um, he also lost to Chris Weidman in 2020. which Close is- fight. It's, yeah, that is called that I I call that a red flag. <laughs> um, first red flag right there. Um, but then he beat Tom Breeze, who's a fucking stud. We can both agree there, right? Yeah, I like Tom Breeze. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that. Uh, yeah, he was supposed to fight Antonio Arroyo, but that fight never went through. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's going against a grizzled vet in uh, Brad Tavares. Um, having Brad Tavares fighting um, the early prelims is just kind of crazy to me, you know? A little disrespectful, but... Very, very disrespectful, I think. It's, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that, but anyway... I think that uh, Brad Tavares is able to take this fight, honestly. Um, He won his last fight um, against Antonio Carlos Jr. Antonio Carlos Jr. just tried to uh, basically clinch with him the entire fight. That's what he does. That was the entire fight. And his last two losses before that were to Edmund Shabazi and back when he was not a derailed prospect and to the champ in Israel Adesanya. Um, so fought some, a lot better competition. Um, Tavares, he, he's just, a, he's just a vet. He's going to pull it off. He's got, he's got, he's a well round, pretty well-rounded fighter fighting out of extreme couture. He, he's got this. I, I'm taking I'm taking the Ray Sifo coached fighter in Brad Tavares. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you on this one, Dan. Akhmedov, 4-1 and one in his last five. Very well-rounded fighter. Really grappling, heavy fight style. Averages 2.6 takedowns per fight at 50% accuracy. Wins mostly by decision. Seven, seven out of eight of his last fights have gone to decision. He's taken on Brad Tavares, 3-2 and two in his last five. He's a stand-up fighter. Wins mostly by decision as well. This was a smart bet that I said earlier. This fight going the distance, I really like. Um, I could see Tavares knocking him out because I, I, I think Tavares got solid takedown defense. I think he's going to be able to keep it on the feet. That's the main reason why I'm choosing him. Um, Tavares has only really lost to high level competition. Um, this is a vintage striker grappler matchup, in my opinion. I think Akhmedov will be able to get it done, but I do think of smart bet in this is um, over on the rounds or going the distance. Yeah. You don't awfully, you don't like often see like 185ers like this going three rounds. And both guys do on a, like almost pretty much every, every time, basically, besides one, once in a while, they'll get like Brad Chabarros will get a KO, Akhmadov will get a sub or something like that. But close fight. Brad Tavares is a striker, though, and I think he'll keep... Eh, we'll, we'll agree to disagree. 
Right. We're going to, uh, I'm going Akhmedov, Dan's going Tavares, and we're going to move right into the next one, Jennifer Maya versus Jessica I. And you want, you're going to take that one too, right, Dan? Uh, yeah, I can take it. Right. Uh, Jennifer Maya coming off of her title shot against Valentina Shevchenko, where she honestly didn't do that bad. Um, considering how Jessica I left the fight against Valentina Shevchenko, um, she made it to a decision. She won all five rounds with the 125 queen. So it's impressive. It's impressive. I'm like, I thought she was going to get knocked out in the first two to three rounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what's it called? Jessica I, on the other hand, Yeesh, when you look at her recently. Um, tw- b- going back to, um, we're going to go back two years, basically. So that was the Valentina Shevchenko brutal head kick KO that I was alluding to. Um, after that, she scored a win over Viviana Rujo and a decision win. Uh, But after that, she lost a decision to Cynthia Calvillo and to Jojo Calderwood, which we both saw on Jessica. Wow, Jessica I is fighting on both the McGregor cards. Oh, is that that right? Yeah. Um, What's interesting, oh, what's also interesting is that she was main card on the last, what doesn't make sense to me is Jennifer Maya is coming off a title shot. Jessica I is coming off a main card mcgregor like she fought on the main card of the mcgregor card and now she's on the early prelims yeah um they're both ranked top five i think yeah this is a fight that shouldn't be in <laughs> anywhere the near early them. prelims in my opinion but <laughs> hey it is what it is um it's it's a it's a kind of tough fight because maya's obviously got that nasty jujitsu um, she's got that win over Jojo Calderwood. So if you want to play MMA math, Maya wins. Um, but either way, I, I I just don't think it's a great matchup for Jessica I. She's 34 years old. She's got a ton, ton, ton of experience. She's lost a lot of decisions. And I just see her losing another decision in this one. But safe bet, take the over, I guess. There's like a chance that. Maya could submit her, so that might fuck you. But either take Maya or take the take the uh, over, because I don't I don't like Jessica I's career trajectory at this point. Yeah, Dan, I'm gonna totally agree with you. Um, Jennifer Maya, three and two in her last five. Like you said, challenged challenged. Uh, Shevchenko in her last time out, four, uh, 49 46 on all scorecards. Um, she got a round. Yeah, she got a round. A big problem for her, in my opinion, is that she's kind of one sided. Her stand up's pretty good. She does have a slightly negative striking differential, averages 3.3 strikes per minute at 39% accuracy. Uh, she's taken on Jessica I, three and two in her last five, wins mostly by decision, and again, is kind of one sided, in my opinion. She just likes to stand up and also has a slightly negative striking differential 3.7 strikes per minute 37 percent striking accuracy they're pretty much like this like pretty matched up very very similarly this fight i think is razor razor thin both girls are so similar it's tough to say but i'm going uh jennifer maya i just think that she's better if this fight's standing up she's better at stand up um i think another smart bet would be going the distance or betting the over though like you said too dan yeah all right, cool. So we're both agreeing. We're both going Jennifer Maya. We're going to move right into the next one. Ryan Hall versus Ilya Taporia. All right, so this is uh, the fight. This is the prelim I'm most looking forward to because Ilya Taporia is another... I said it. You can go back in our videos and watch it. What? There are a couple people I put these asterisks on that I'm like, I keep an eye on you. Tom Aspinall. I watch you. Surreal Gone was one at one point. Now he's fighting for an interim title shot. Is the interim needed? No. We can debate that. We can make a whole <laughs> video on that. Um, 
So I'm not even going to get into that. But anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Ilya Tapuria, you were sucking off. Oh, Ilya. yeah. Ilya Tapuria, yeah. So he's like a George, Georgian Spain featherweight product. Um, he's first known as a grappler, uh, BJJ black belt. And if you look throughout his career, he mostly submitted guys on his way up. Um, and then his punches, he started really like rounding out his game. He's 2-0 and in the UFC with dominating wins over Yusuf Zalal and Damon Jackson. His knockout win over Damon Jackson was just pure nasty. He was ripping the body, then came up over the top, hitting the head, knocking him out cold. Um, in the Yusuf Zalal fight, he just absolutely dominated the fight with harder punches, great countering, and almost submitting him multiple times. This He's a Greco-Roman wrestling product as well he has creative takedowns not just the usual double legs he has seamless transitions on the ground control he really he controls the octagon well he doesn't just lay and pray either he's always going for a submission and he's also an expert at taking the back um he loops a little bit too much but he's fighting ryan hall here so i'm ryan hall's stand up is not like he's gonna be doing the same thing it's not, it's not Israel Adesanya like Ilya Topuria has a massive advantage on the feet. Um, that's where I break this fight down to. Um, we all know Ryan Hall at this point. Um, he's people, people, he is someone that people are very scared to fight. Nobody wants to fight him. Um, remember his heel hook win over BJ Penn? That was fucking that was nasty. Sick. That was sick. But, um, yeah, I, I just see Ryan Hall has, like, don't be talking he's to not him. good enough on the feet, I think. I don't think he's good enough on the feet to be in that upper echelon. And this is a fight to get, I think, Ilya Topuria into that upper echelon, in my opinion. Um, Ilya Topuria was my number one prospect to watch. So maybe slight bias here. But when you go and you compare their uh, grappling, you know, like Ryan Hall's here, Ilya Topuri is here. Striking, Ilya Topuri is here. Ryan Hall's down here. Okay. So I think Ilya Topuri get, get. I think he gets a finish in this fight. He knocks out Ryan Hall in the first round. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to go the other way in this one. Uh, Ryan Hall, like the most ducked man. Wow. The most. Ducked I mean, he is. I'm just saying, Delperia is a minus two fifty favorite. Okay. Those, yeah, those odds makers are smoking crack. It, Ryan Hall, the most ducked man in UFC history. Not even an exaggeration. He's literally the most feared guy in the UFC until Ngannou came. And I think he took the he took the medal from him. But literally, Ryan Hall was ducked by he has four fights in the UFC. He's thirty six. Islam years. Makachev right now is the most ducks. <laughs> nobody wants it. Nobody wants to fight him. Yeah, that's it, it's moved on. But he um, Ryan Hall undefeated in the UFC four and zero, third degree BJJ black belt under Felipe Costa. Fights out of TriStar. He's a multi-world um, champion in BJJ. His submission game is out of this world. His stand-up is a little unorthodox. Hits at weird angles, like pretty like wonky, but isn't terrible. He got two knockdowns on uh, Darren Elkins in his last time out in 2019. Uh, he's going to be taking on Ilya Taporia, 2-0 in the UFC, undefeated 10-0 record, also a BJJ black belt. Wins mostly by submission, averages 4.2 takedowns per fight at 55% accuracy over the course of his first two fights. Um, this this fight's tough to call. Um, Don't underestimate Tapuria's ground game. It It's easily, I agree with you, Dan, it's like the most, the fight I'm most excited for, I think, on the prelims, maybe one or two. I, but I have to go with Ryan Hall on this one. I think that this fight will eventually go to the ground. 
and I think Hall is superior on the ground, and I think he's got one of the best IQs in the MMA. So I'm I just I'm gonna go with uh, Ryan Hall in this one. Well, here's one more thing I want to say. When you have two specialists in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, yeah, you oh, they tend up. to stand up a lot. That is an old wives' tale, Dan. We saw it against Mackenzie Dern versus Jandaroba happened fight. last year. There's been plenty of fights where there's submission-heavy games. Kamaru Usman versus Colby Covington, sure, both name, wrestlers. It's, so. not, it's not guaranteed. You're making it sound like it's guaranteed. Come on. I think it stays on the feet and Ilya takes his head off. That's just me. I'm going to be I'm gonna be betting the Ilya knockout for that one. Wow, that is just – you might as well throw your money in a blender. <laughs> He's a minus 250 favorite. You're, you're acting like it's a minus five – or you're acting like it's Sean O'Malley, minus 725 favorite. Well, that – he's – <laughs> it's, it's like a – it's a literally like a moderate favorite, like in the middle favorite. Two and a half to one. Yeah. All right, we're disagreeing on that one. I'm going Ryan Hall. Dan's going Ilya Taporia. We're going to move right into the next one. Trevin Giles versus Driscus mm-hmm. Duplicius. Um, That's all you, though. <laughs> Duplicius, 1-0 and in the UFC. Coming off a round one KO win over Marcus Perez. 15 and 2 MMA record, all by finish, nine subs, six by KOTKO. He's a second degree black belt in, kickbo- in kickboxing. He's taken on Trevin Giles, three and two in his last five, losing both of his fights by submission. He's most recently coming off a decision victory win over Roman Delice. He's got a plus one point, and I think highly of Roman Delice. So that's kind of, a, I think that's a big deal. He's got a plus 1.38 striking differential at 56% accuracy, 1.37 takedowns per fight at 80% accuracy and 80% takedown defense. Very well-rounded. I think Giles is the far more well-rounded fighter in this one. And uh, yeah, I think he takes this one. So I'm going to ride with Giles. So will I, and he's going to win that fight Um, with his jab is just killer. He's got a stinging, crisp, fast jab. Uh, I think he's going to fight behind that, and he's going to get the W. Yeah, he's but, actually like ra- like rallied up a pretty nice three-fight winning streak against James Kraus, Bevan Lewis, and Roman Delice. That's pretty solid. All tough yeah. guys. Yeah. And he, uh, he, he's shown to like be a little bit like submission- like uh, pr- prone to getting submitted, but he's kind of he's worked on. Yeah, that. but they're they're in round three when he casts out a little bit. The only thing that I can really say about Trevin Giles is he's got actually he's got two Achilles heels. His fight making his fight IQ is iffy. He makes some pretty bad decisions in the fight. That's fair. And he also uh, has a questionable gas tank. He he does slow down, so. Facts. I'm going. I'm, but I'm still going to ride with him. I'm going to ride or die with Trevin Giles. This fight's near even on the odds. We're both taking Trevin Giles. Is it even? Trevin- it's surprising. A little surprising. Yeah, almost. almost e- Actually, uh, Duplessis is more of a favorite. Wow, is what I'm seeing. So, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take Trevin Giles. In this. All right. Yeah, I, I like Giles that. a lot. Yeah, it, same. when it comes down to that. Beautiful. Both agreeing on another underdog. We're both going Trevin Giles. We're going to move right into the next one. Nico Price versus Mikel Perea. You want this one, Dan? Um, you to take it. Yeah, I could take it. Yeah. Yeah, you could take the gross next one. Okay. Um, <laughs> What's it called? So we got Nico Price versus Michelle Perea. Um, Michelle Perea is coming off that win over Chaos Williams. I remember, I remember at first we called that a robbery, and I watched that fight back. And I really, I, I can't, I'm, I'm interested in, in what Michelle Pereira can do in the future. Um, I consider him coming off a three fight winning streak. You know that illegal knee that he landed on Diego Sanchez. Yeah, he was fucking him up. He was fucking him up. Um, he's super. He's well rounded, and he's got this like capoeira fucking like. He's got to chill out with some of the movement a little bit. Oh my god, he's putting on a. Sh- he needs to stop putting on a show, and he needs to fight. That's what he needs to stop doing. But that's his fight style. He likes to put on a show. He likes to do the spinning shit and the flying and the backflips and the. 
He's in. He loves it. That's his game. That's his game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Then you got Nico Price on the other hand, who is just a gamer. I think we could agree. He's just he's a he's a gamer. Total gamer. Um. He's coming off that win over Donald Cerrone. Overturned. Uh, yeah. How did it? Why did it get overturned? This is the second time in his career. It happened earlier in his career to Alex Morono too. <laughs> He's, he gets wins, and then he fails drug tests after. So it's like he has two no contests on his record that are two extra wins in the UFC, yeah. in the UFC alone. So who knows what happened before? Yeah, when you look at Nico Price, like he lost to Abdul Razak al-Hassan. Uh, he was KO'd in that fight. That's going to happen. Um, he got caught. And yeah. if you see Abdul Razak al-Hassan – He's just looping punches all, all over the place. I wish the guy could throw a straight fucking punch for God's I love, sake. He's great, though. He's, he's on a little – he's had a tough time since coming back to the game. But I know. Like, he pissed me off so much in his last fight because all he was throwing was, like, overhands and shit like yeah, that. We were heavy on him, too. Yeah. And – but – um, and then uh, Jeff Neal lost, but oh. – and then the Vincente Luque uh, doctor stoppage due to an eye injury. Um. His eye got fucked up. But, um, yeah, in between that, he had uh, that up kick knockout over James Vick. Nice. Um, knocked out Tim Means. Um, he had- knocked out Randy Brown from Hammer Fist from the bottom, if you remember that. Badass. Back from 2018. That's, Rude Boy that's Randy Brown? You talking about Rude Boy Randy Brown? Rude Boy Randy Brown? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about Rude Boy Randy Brown. He knocked him out from the bottom. That's crazy. Um, so this is a super fun fight to watch. I would advise not betting betting on it because who the fuck knows what's going to happen. Right. Um, both these guys are gamers. Both, and it's just going to be it's like this fight can go like a million different ways. That's why I would advise not betting on it. But I'm going to take Pereira in it slightly. Really, the, get ready. I agree with you, Dan for fireworks this fight is fireworks i think this one i'm most excited for in the prelims honestly not the ryan hall one i, I like this one i think this is prelims though right this might be main yeah. prelims nico price two and two and one no contest in his last five coming off that failed drug test like dan said supposed to be an adam's decision victory uh but before that had a very close fight with vicente luque look at that fight before he got caught in the third dead even 13 of, the, 13 of his 14 wins have been by finishes, 10 KO, TKO. He's taken on Michelle Paella, 3-2 and two in his last five. Very well-rounded fighter. Uh, very entertaining. Kind of gets lost in flashy shit, like I said before. And that's why – but you know, but that's why he's such a big draw is that doing that stuff. So it's like you can't stop his game plan right now. Like you can't be all of a sudden like a – start doing smart stuff. Um, <laughs> he's known for being a dumbass in there and putting on a show. I think Pereira, Pereira has the advantage on the ground, but I don't think this fight is going where near the ground. Nico Price has fought far better competition in the UFC specifically, and he's the better striker. So I'm going to go with Price in this one. Yeah, it's a tough fight, so I can't blame you. Yeah, I, but I actually do. I think he's the underdog in this, and I, I like it. I li- I'm a little more confident in that one, but uh, that, that one's just going to be so much fun. Yeah, I'm not going to bet on it. I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so uh, Dan's going Michelle Paella. I'm going Nico Price, and we're going to move right into the next one. Max Griffin versus Carlos Condit, which Dan called the ugliest fight on the card. That I was this one, right? This one's the ugliest one? Yeah, this is gross. Max gross. Griffin, three, three and two in his last five, is on a two-fight KO winning streak. Super well-rounded, averages four strikes per minute at 48% accuracy, 1.7 takedowns at 50% accuracy. He's tough as nails. He's only been finished once in 11 UFC fight career. And that was in his UFC debut against Colby Covington. Yeah. And his last knockout was brutal. Dude, he's got, he's got some crazy KO power. He's taken on Carlos Condit in this one, two and three in his last five, coming back from a two year layoff in 2018, came back in 2020, broke his five fight losing streak skid has looked much better. Um, I think he's fighting out of Jackson Wink now. Condit has been prone to getting submitted, but it's I always been fighting out of Jackson Wink. Oh, he has been. Yeah, Diaz one, two, and five. Hell yeah! 
Um, I don't <laughs> think he has really, uh, I don't think he has to really worry about getting submitted in this fight, though. I am worried about Griffin taking this fight to the ground, not necessarily um, worried about him getting the submission victory, but I think that just a lot of control. I think he very well could get the submission victory because Carlos Condit just does not defend the submission he's, very well and you know what and he actually is like pretty like decent on the ground like he's got solid background in bjj yeah. i just don't know why it just doesn't translate to his game um yeah i think he's just gonna get a lot of control time on the ground maybe like a decision victory but i'm going max griffin yeah i'm gonna go max griffin as well I, I just don't like Carlos Condit at this point in, in, in his career. He's been in so many wars. Um, the Robbie Lawler fight. Oh my God. One of the greatest, one of the greatest fights in UFC history, I would yeah. say. And he's still like somewhat of a young 37 years old. He's not like, yeah, uh, I think he's an old 37. If he's you an, ask he's me. An old 37, but 37 years old, like guys fight to like their forties now, you know, it's not, but him, he hasn't really looked that great. Um, we're both going Max Griffin in that one. We're going right into the next one. Sean O'Malley versus Chris Moutinho. Moutinho. All right, let's be real here. This is the biggest gimme fight I've ever fucking seen. Um, Sean O'Malley by KO in the first or second round. That's all I'm saying. This guy he's fighting has shown to be not that well-rounded. He had He's 9-4 and four with two of his... Two of his losses were by knockout. Two of his losses were by submission. Sean O'Malley is going to go out there, put on a show to start off the card. Plain and simple. Yeah, not much. I mean, this one put on a show in like however you want to say it, but because like people were saying Devashvili. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. It says I'm unstable. Oh, okay. um, What's it called? Uh, Rob tried to take this fight, but he's got a fight scheduled in September. Like, I mean, I maybe they could someone else. Um, they couldn't make Ricky weight. Simone. That's what it was. Ricky. What? Ricky Simone. Yeah, he he tried to, but said he couldn't make the weight. Yeah, and Sean, um, and Sean O'Malley has to like diet down and really yeah, cut down to one thirty-five. Big dude. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. O'Malley all day in this one. It's a gimme fight. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Not much after fun. this fight, let's get like, can we give Sean O'Malley a, a test? Have him fight Cheeto again. That, that yeah, that's that good. Seems, that seems solid to do. Oh, think. for sure. I would love to see that. I yeah. would like to see more of that actually, because that was it was bullshit. Like it was a bullshit win, honestly. Um, it, yeah, it, it be, we should have got more of that fight. I want to see what would have happened. Yeah, I totally. You agree. know, like let let's be real here. Whatever side of the fence you're on, on oh he won strategically. He, we want more. Right. Let's get a second fight. Let's see what happens. Totally agree. So uh, I'm also going Sean O'Malley. Uh, this fight is bullshit. It's bullshit. Um, I got nothing to say about it. I don't want to say anything about it. We're gonna move right into the next one. Irene Aldana versus Yana Kuniskaya. You want this one, Dan? You want me to take it? Um. You could take it. All right. Irene Aldana, three and two in her last five, wins mostly by KOTKO. Nine out of her 12 pro wins have been by finish. Really coming off, uh, coming off a really one sided beat down from Holly Holm back in 2020. She's a striker. She does take a lot of damage, absorbs almost six strikes per minute, lands 5.5. She also has 82% take. That's damage. because Holly Holm took her down and just pounded her for five rounds. It was so brutal to watch. I kind of. I felt for her eventually. I was like, geez, this is like a fucking, this is stop. Main training partner of a future 125 yeah. contender, Alexa Grasso. Facts. We know how much you love her. She's taken on Yana Kuniskaya, four and one in her last five. Also wins mostly by KOTKO. She's more well rounded of the two. She's got a plus 1.6 striking difference. Oh. oh, my bad. You there, Dan? Yeah, we're, we're good now, I think. Right, cool. She lands at 57% striking accuracy. Also, 1.6 takedowns per fight at 53% accuracy. She does struggle with takedowns a bit, but I don't see Aldana really going for much of those. Um, I'm going to go with Kuniskaya on this one, but this is close. But um, So you're saying this fight's going to stay on the feet? I think it was going to stay on the feet, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna take Irene Aldana's boxing um, over Yana. I, I think Yana's a stud, but she's more of a well-rounded mixed martial artist. She know? is, yeah, for sure. Irene Aldana's more of a stand-up, stand and bang, you know, like has dope boxing, you know. Yeah, she's so, actually she's got a uh, she's got a lot of KO. She's got she wins mostly by KO. You don't see a lot of like that from. 135ers and the women especially. Oh, Aldana? Yeah, Aldana. Yeah. Well, they, the, the Lobo gym down in Mexico where she cha- trained, her main training partner is Alexa Grasso. They're both dope technical strikers. You oh, know, okay. like, they're fucking great. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take Aldana in this fight. I think she, uh, who knows? Maybe she finishes it. Who knows? We don't know. But we're giving you our best guess. I'm going Yana Kuniskaya, Dansko, and Irene Aldana. We're going to move right into the next one. Tai Tuivasa versus Greg Hardy. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, Tai Tuivasa in this one. <laughs> yeah, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Um, how, how can you not love Bam Bam, first of all? I make a solid case for Greg Hardy in this one, I have to say. Um. What's it called? He's making actually. I thought it was a quick turnaround, but it's not that quick of a turnaround. Um, Tai Tuivasa at one point was coming off of, of, of a three fight losing streak. Um, he has since bounced back and won two straight in a row, and now he's fighting Greg Hardy. Um, this is a battle of two really big dudes, and uh, it's like who's gonna fall first? And um, I think that Bam Bam gets it done. Yeah. A little bit more experience, you know? Actually, not not really. Um, Greg Hardy's got more UFC fights. Yeah, but, like, Greg Hardy got signed to the UFC because his name was Greg Hardy, and he had... All right, let me make my case for Greg Hardy then right now. Okay, make, make your case. Yeah. Um, I he is a piece of shit. He's you know I'm he, I mean, if uh, yeah he's a piece of shit. He's I mean piece. what he did was very piece of shit like. Yeah, he's he's a piece of shit. Nine out of a ten of his pro wins have been. I'm um, his pro fights have been under the UFC umbrella. He's been under. He's been fighting top UFC competition his entire career. Literally, he's six and three with one no contest. That should be another win, but he d- took the fucking inhaler. So it should be seven and three in the in the UFC alone. He has a plus one point seven one striking differential, averages four point eight strikes at fifty percent accuracy, eighty percent takedown defense. I think he's shown that he's able to hold his own in the UFC in the UFC, especially in his last fight against Marcin Tibera, where it, I was surprised how well Greg Hardy did up against Marcin Tibera, who I think so highly of, and literally was holding his own until he got caught, which you know is going to happen against. Well, he got taken down and flattened out and just, you know. Yeah, he, um, I think that uh, Tibera kind of knew, like, that was the game plan. Like, get him not thinking we're going for takedowns in the first round, immediately shoot for a takedown in the second round. And I think Tuivasa should, if Tuivasa shoots for the takedown. He's never recorded a takedown ever. I know he hasn't. But. (laughs) He gets a takedown. Yeah, I don't know. Greg Hardy, it doesn't seem like in his last fight, he did not know how to defend anything on the ground, it seemed like. Yeah, but Tuvasa literally has never even attempted a, a fucking. That's I why I'm saying this fight's mostly going to be two big men and who's seeing who falls. Exactly. Let me finish, though. He's taken on Tai Tuvasa, two and three in his last five, coming off a Sorry, real, real gimme fight against Harry Hunsucker. Um, last minute though last, and i respect harry hunsucker for taking that less than a week notice Tuvas is a striker 11 out of his 12 wins have been by kotko plus 0.96 striking differential 50 percent accuracy just like hardy isn't really that good on the ground he's also never been taken uh he's never been taken down in uh his ufc wins every time he's been taken down he he loses Tuvasa is more technical out of the two, but Hardy has that five point five and a half inch reach advantage, some really heavy hands. 
And since I see the stain on the feet, I just think that Hardy is able to catch him before Tuvasa is. But th- this fight is just, this fight is close. I would not bet on this whatsoever. I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't even know if I would bet the under because these guys no. have rock solid chins. Yeah, who knows? Like, who knows what's gonna happen? Like, this is another fight. Like, two fights on this card. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's what the gonna first happen. One? What? What was the first one? Nico Price and Michelle. Oh, Price. okay, okay. I kind of yeah, I like Nico Price. Now. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Dan. But actually, we're not agreeing. We're disagreeing, but we're agreeing that this fight is gross and we don't know what's going on. Dan's- it's not gross. It, it could be. It has the potential to be gross if it goes yeah. to like the third yeah. round. Oh my god! If these guys get tired, for, I think Tuvasa has the better cardio too. So that's something to consider. All right. So I'm going Hardy. Dan's going Tuvasa. Um, next one is the co-main: Gilbert Burns, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Do you want the co-main or the main, Dan? Who got the main last time? Do we know? Um, I don't know, but you got you. I'll take the co main, you can take it to take the main, yeah. All right, yeah, they're both like pretty, pretty dope, yeah. All right, you got it. Steven Uh, Wonderboy Thompson. We've looked over him before, and I think that was as as a YouTube channel and as people predicting UFC fights, us looking over Steven Thompson, I think, has been the biggest mistake we've ever made um i agree dude i agree yeah we uh, like in the jeff neal fight i i don't know what came over me and i thought jeff neal was gonna win that fight and i just forgot because wonder boy like wonder boy is slowed down his fighting like how many times he, he fights like once a year now basically give or take and like we just don't really see him as much you don't talk about him as much jeff neal was working his way up he was doing his thing yeah, I mean, still, this is Steve. This is Wonder Boy Thompson trying to get into that title picture, and I would love to see him fight Kamaru Usman at one point because that would be a very, very, very intriguing fight stylistically. Um, if we could ever see that, right? Praying to the MMA gods, we can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, Gilbert during your Burns, on the other hand, we we know what he's all about. Um. That you don't even need to watch a tape to, to, to for you to for to say that he's got fucking bricks for hands and he's got phenomenal jujitsu. Yes. Um. I think he's gonna come in. It, the smart move on for Burns is to try to take this fight to the ground because the, I I don't think he hits. Wonderful. Uh, like, there's the one in fucking 10 chance or the one in 12 chance or whatever right. that he catches Wonder Boy and finishes him. He has the power to do so. Um, he, he almost knocked out Kamaru Usman, for God's sake. Like, this guy hits, this guy hits hard. Um, but Wonder Boy is just so much technically better on the feet. I think the fight st- st- starts on the feet. A significant amount of it stays on the feet. Um, I don't think Burns. What's Burns' wrestling stats like? He like I don't think he's he he's not like his takedown accuracy is thirty five percent. Like it's it's nothing it's nothing that impressive, you know. Stephen Stephen Thompson has fought much better wrestlers than, than Gilbert Burns, For so. Sure. This is Wonder Boy's fight to lose. Um, this gets him into the title picture. Uh, maybe sets up a fight with like a Colby, a Jorge Mas for a rematch. That'd be fun. A Leon Edwards fight for That'd be fun too. One of those three, I think he's fighting next if he can if he could get this win. So Steven Thompson, go get that dub. Yeah, Dan, I'm agreeing with you on this one. Gilbert Burns, 4-1 in his last five, lost his last time out to Kamara Usman for the belt. Um, I honestly didn't think he deserved that shot. Not that he's a bad, not that he's bad, but I think that other people, other people fought harder competition and deserved it more than him. Um, his game has really evolved, though. His striking's imp- improved greatly. He's developed some, like, crazy punching power and some actually nice crisp strikes that he's got. He's taken on Steven Thompson, three and two in his last five. He's on a two-fight winning streak, two very one-sided unanimous decision wins. 
over Vincente Luque and Jeff Neal, like big names that we saw do very well recently. Jeff Neal, actually, not so much. He kind of went down a bit. Uh, no one has attempted a takedown on Wonder Boy in four fights. And I don't know if it's, that's because Wonder Boy's just always on his bike, you know, like moving around that they can't even get a hold of him. You're going to gonna shoot and he's not even going to be there. Exactly. <laughs> um, I think that Burns stands and strikes with Wonder Boy. And I think that Wonder Boy is just able to outpoint him to a decision win. Yeah, what Wonder Boy does really well is he makes you reset. He, you, you, you plan in your head. You're like, all right, I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna go with this blitz kind of attack. Right. And then all he does is a simple like one two step to the side, and then you're reset and you're like, okay, he's at a different angle now. What do I do? And then boom, you get pieced up a little bit, and then you know, and that's the whole fight. Right. He does that the whole fight. He did yeah. that to Luke one like brilliantly you know um he just luke could never find like range for his offense to really come in so wonder boy's got this all right dan we're agreeing on that one we're both going stephen thompson we're gonna move right into the main event dustin poirier versus conor mcgregor the trilogy Um, the trilogy crazy so dustin poirier won the last time out hurt Connor with some really hard leg kicks and like immobilized that front leg. He was switching. Also managed to get a takedown in the first round. Poirier looked a lot better in the second. Um, he over doubled Connor's significant strikes in the second round. Had Connor up against the fence and ended up getting a knockdown and finished it up on the ground. Um, I think that I don't think Connor McGregor is really in his prime anymore. I don't think that he's a totally 100% has his head in the game right now either. I think he I disagree with that. I think I he lost I'll his that though. I think he lost that like his spark. You know what I mean? Um Dustin Poirier on the other hand, I think is still evolving, still getting better. 6 out of his last 7 fights have been either fight of the night or performance of the night fights. Oh, not fights, wins, excuse me. Have been have been fight of the night or performance of the night wins. I think Poirier came out a little too. Um, I think Poirier will come out a little slow in this fight and try to get Connor a little bit later into the championship rounds because he knows he's going to slow down a bit. Um, and I think Poirier is able to get it done and win the trilogy. Yeah. So th- this trilogy, oh, I'm unstable. No, you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um. So I'm going to say Conor McGregor has a much better chance in this one than the last one. Okay. Because the guy who lost the last one knows, like, the adjustments they need to make, you know? So he knows that outside left, like, that outside left kick, uh, left calf kick from a southpaw, because he's also a southpaw to his front right calf is going to be a major factor in this fight. I think we see a stance switch a little bit. I think we don't see Connor as wide as he normally is. I think he fights more traditionally, keeps his feet closer together. Um, yeah, Con- Connor's going to come out there. Con- Connor takes losses very well in the moment, but I think after he does not take them well. He wants he wants this trilogy one and every single person in the MMA community can acknowledge that Conor McGregor can most definitely finish this fight in the first round. There's the possibility of it. Even Poirier said that Conor hurt him in that second fight. I think it was a right uppercut that he like, it was like, you know what punch I'm talking about. We've yeah, he did. Him. He had him. You could tell. He like um, he almost like um, he was like a little bit more coy after like he kind of like was you could tell he started backing up a little bit you could tell he was actually like a little bit hurt by it. Yeah, um, so yeah, Conor McGregor obviously hits like a fucking Mack truck. Yeah, um, Ilya Topuria. Uh Shout out to him too <laughs> because he hits like a Mack truck too. Um, but anyway. Um, 
before we start arguing about <laughs> Ryan Hall and Ilya Topuria, which we, we could do if you guys want a video of it. We can make that the main event. Um, it should be the main event. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this fight's really close to call. It could go a variety of ways. Um, Connor by first round finish is not out of the question whatsoever. We can both agree with that statement. You never know, um, dude. Puncher's chance. I think more than a puncher's chance because I think like, Conor McGregor is a good martial artist, a mixed martial artist. Like when Poirier took him down, he did the right things to get back up. He knows how to get back up from from his feet after getting taken back. Oh taken yeah, down. definitely. He well, just wasn't he wasn't expecting the takedown when the takedown landed. That takedown that Poirier hit landed on him wasn't it wasn't like a like a like a nice lateral drop takedown or anything crazy like that you know it was like just caught him sleeping he just you know just took like grabbed his leg and fucking took him down you know like high crotch single basically um i think poirier tries to do the same again in the first round if not more i think he really tries to wrestle him in the first round or two and then poirier starts doing his boxing kickboxing type shit so i'm going to take Fourier in this fight tentatively again this is a fight i might not bet on because i'm spending the money on watching conor mcgregor fight um it's gonna be a tough it, it's it's super tough to call for sure um it's pretty damn 50 50 if you ask me the odds are dead even yeah, it's, oh, it, it it and it and it should be because Conor like this is a very motivated Conor McGregor coming out right now, very like tremendously motivated. So I, I really really want to see what happens in this fight. Yeah, um, me too. I can't wait, dude. Bro, Me as a so fan, far. I'm more excited than even giving a prediction. I'm yeah. predicting Poirier, I guess. But, like, McGregor has the, all the capabilities to win this fight. And what if McGregor does win? Does he fight Char Charles Oliveira and go for the belt? Like, He probably will get it. Maybe. Unless Charles Oliveira just go, dives for a knee bar and then you know, he'll get it. <laughs> he'll get it. He'll get that knee bar or that uh heel hook. But um what's it called? Yeah, who who knows in that fight either. But that's like so many intriguing matchups in this division. Like where's where does Gage go fit? Um like it's okay. just my personal opinion, I think that Gage is the best one fifty five on the planet. Uh, yeah, I I do agree. I think I think you match him up against Michael Chandler and he knocks Michael Chandler out yeah. in a, in a war of a fight. Um, but he knocks Michael Chandler out. Cool. Um, and then, but this, but uh, this is all just straying away from the topic because I don't know who the fuck's going to win. Yeah. Um, People like a lot of people, a lot of the MMA community is cut and dry, just saying Poirier's got this, Poirier's got this, Poirier's got this. But it's gonna be close, yeah. It's in gonna my be, opinion. I think it's gonna be interesting. We're all gonna watch it, feel those nerves and those butterflies in our stomach when they're in that first round because oh, yeah. anything can fucking happen. So, I'm leaning Poirier, yep. I'm gonna choose Poirier. But I am not going to be surprised in the slightest bit if Conor McGregor figures a way to get this done. Yeah, like we said, dead even. Uh, but we're both going Poirier in this one, Dan. Poirier for the trilogy. Yeah, um, we can both, you know, eat our words pretty strongly on this one, but... What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? I'd also like to thank our friend uh, Matt for editing our last video. Oh yeah. Um, if you could Killer job. Go, go back and take a look at it and tell us what you think. Yeah. I um, think we're going to go back to another layup this week because I'm not that sophisticated. I'm sorry, guys. That was great though. He did a great job. 
Yeah, uh, he, he really did a great job. Um, we will see what happens on Saturday night. No brainer MMA signing off. <laughs>